Mountain Baptist Church, let's stand. Take your songbooks, turn over to song number 224. 224, we'll sing all four verses of There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. Amen, 224. 224, everybody standing. <clears throat> Here we go. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come and now honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, oh that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Amen. Appreciate you all being here tonight. What a blessing that you're all here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody awake? Anybody awake? Or do we have to wake you up tonight? Amen. Amen. Anybody awake? Amen. Oh, and it's sorry, that was me. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're glad you're here tonight. Amen. And we're going to pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we can be in the house of the Lord tonight. God, what a blessing it is. And God, I pray that you use this night for your glory and your honor. And God, I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to lift you up and give you the praise that you deserve and need. And Lord, help us to know the joy of the Lord. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. You can be seated. All right, song 248. 248, we'll sing all three verses of Now I Belong to Jesus, amen. Amen. 248. Amen. Here we go. <coughs> Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone. But for eternity, once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him, now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, 
freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he came to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. We got all the prayer request slips in, and we got them all. Take them to the, the aisle and get them picked up. Amen. That'd be a blessing. Amen. Brother Art, thank you. All righty. We got them all. Well, let's, you can write these things down. Ms. Grissom said, for her lost loved ones to be saved. She got an unspoken request that's in need of answer uh, for God's will in her life. And she'll find that and follow it. And for finances, and she still needs tire for RV. I need tire for my truck. <laughs> Tires for RV. And uh, a new vehicle. And to keep the van running till the new vehicle is provided. For the Grissom kids, spiritual. Amen. And then uh, Eric says, pray for Angela and Seth, their finances and housing. They already got the house, brother. But they still need a prayer. Amen. Michelle says, pray for Aria and Naomi's salvation and protection. Praise the Lord for seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. What light's that? I don't know. Some light for somebody, amen. I'm talking to myself. So it says to play. Oh, the play. The play that they're doing. Have you seen it? They're doing the uh, the uh, scenery for it. That's what's outside there by the cars. So uh, try not to let it fall on you. <laughs> but they were painting them today. And I don't know if it's totally dry, but... It says a play to touch many lives and the set to get finished by the end of this week and the for the media ministry. Amen. Uh, Jacob Halstead says pray for his dad's work, his grades in school, and his mom and sisters and grandpa. Uh, and his mom and sister pray for them. And grandpa, his grandpa has cancer. Pray for him. That's uh, Miss Christine's dad. Amen. Pray for him. Faith says, pray for her to fear the Lord and be a godly example. And for the church kids that aren't saved, for them to get saved. Alex's wrist, and he's got the, what are they, those cysts on his wrist? Pray for him. Brother and Mrs. Porter and their health. Got to see Brother Taylor and Mrs. Taylor today. It's, uh, Brother Cliff Taylor and his wife. They came over and spent some time over here. So uh, pray for them also. Brother Taylor, he's got a. He's got a, it's not a pacemaker, but it's a thing to help his heart. And uh, so pray for him. And then pray for Brother Hernandez, his health, and the De Los Santos family. That's Brother De Los Santos up in New Mexico. We go to their camp meeting every year. It's for them to get their house done. And for Megan and Bella, they're spiritual. And Brother Schneider, a missionary to Honduras. For his health and Carissa's grandpa salvation. Oh, here's some more. Little Jacob's adoption. We'd like to adopt him. Pray for that. And Karen and um, Red, right? That's her last name? Yeah, yeah. Pray for her health. And uh, Heather Herring, her salvation. And play, pray for the youth rally, that, that play at the youth rally to go well. And uh, Karen, oh sure, you just wanted to come up here and be seen, that's it. <laughs> for Karen, she says pray for her uh, bio family and their salvation. And for her to be a godly example, amen. And to love the Lord with all her heart, mind, soul, and strength. And also for the church kids' salvation. And for us to adopt Jacob, a.k.a. T.J., yeah, not big Jacob, little Jacob. 
pray for Brother Ronnie and Miss Joanne's relationship and our church to grow in the Lord. Amen. Oh, she got some more stuff on the back, too. Pray for our president <clears throat> to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All those goofs that go away. And you figure out who the goofs are. There's a lot of them at Washington, D.C. Uh, pray for Karen to fear the Lord and only the Lord. She says, praise the Lord for all he's done. Cheyenne says, please pray for her grandma, Janet. Amen. And her uncles to get saved. Uncle to get saved. Please pray for Selena Abel and her aunt Sherry and her friend Debbie, the Rogers, all the neighborhood kids, for Shauna to get saved. She says, please pray that she'll catch up in school and for her to grow in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Is that it? Okay. No other papers. Well, then we'll go to prayer. Wait, hang on. Let me think. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Tell them I'm not here. <laughs> Text them I'm not here. All right. Let's go ahead and go to prayer then.
we'll take up an offering.
Isn't that funny? <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, help us understand what we're going to hear tonight for your glory. And God, you need, um, you need some cheerful Christians, yes. happy Christians, glad Christians. Yes. Lord, Christians that are filled with joy. Yeah. And we'll give you the praise for it, Lord, because this old world, the devil tries to steal our joy. Mm -hmm. yeah, he mm. Tries to kill our testimony. Uh, he just tries to destroy our, our relationships with one another. And that because of this, Lord, uh, we have a lot of Christians that are just walking around just with a sour look on their face. Yeah. No rejoicing in the Lord in their heart. God, I pray. Saved and born again, and the Holy Spirit of God now dwells in you, and you don't you don't have any worry about where you're going. You know for sure. You know that you know that you know you're going to heaven, and so that brings joy to your heart because this whole world, I'm telling you, they think about death on, on a daily basis. I can guarantee it. Hmm. And death is always brought to our doorstep and then brought before our faces in the news and media, and so forth, social media, and someone's died. I found out a preacher that I, I knew. He died here just just uh, recently. Clyde Box. I didn't know he died. Huh? Then a then a, a young preacher go to Crown College there in Tennessee. They found his body yesterday. He was killed. They, they said it was an accident, but there's a lot of suspicious things about the whole circumstances. I mean, there was a cinder block on his gas pedal. In his car, it was still running when they found him. His car was ran into a house. And there was more damage on the car than the house would have provided. Amen? It does it seems shady. They found him drowned in a little river creek bed there in Bristol, Tennessee. I've been to Crown College over there. Huh? I watched some of his preaching. They had, they put his, for a memorial to him, they put some of his preaching on there. Huh? Just a young guy, 20 years old, 20 years old. You know what? The world thinks of death. But you know what? You don't have to think of it in a manner that the world does. You know your body will cease to live in this life, but you go to be with the Lord. Absent from the body is present with the Lord. Well, that should bring joy to your life. Or you say, man, I don't have to worry about where I'm going. I don't have to be concerned about condemnation in hell. I ain't going to be with the Lord in the end. Amen. That should bring joy to your heart. Amen. Yeah. When you go out, there should be joy. You go out of this building, you go to work, 
You leave your house, you go to work. Hey, you, you wake up in the morning, it ought to be joy. Amen. I like it when uh, little Jacob gets up in the morning. First thing he says, I'll be walking past him and he's in his crib. And he'll go, hi, Papa. <laughs> yeah, a year and a month, uh, five months old. Hi, Papa. He just, and then he'll just get it. Hi, 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 hi. Huh? I want your attention. Hi. That's what we should be doing to God. Amen. Yeah, amen. Hi, God. Hi, God. Hi, God in the morning. Yeah. Hi, Father. How you doing? Hey, I'm happy. Yeah, amen. Why? Because I'm still saved. I can't lose it because Jesus Christ yeah. gave us eternal life. Yeah, That's why. <laughs> amen. amen. You know, I was thinking of this. Joy. This old world and, and kids, even saved kids, do this. They will try to get joy and happiness and a good time from uh, someone else or at someone else's expense. Right. They'll hurt someone. huh? They'll tease someone. They'll fool someone. They'll joke with someone. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll uh, make fun of somebody just so they can have a joy and a happiness. Right. But that's temporal. But that's the old way the old world tries to get happiness and joy. You know what they do? See an old drunk walking down the street, everybody laughs. Huh? It's not funny. That shouldn't be funny. Our joy should be coming from the Lord. Not at the expense of someone else. Someone already paid the expense for us to have joy. And he did it on the cross. And he was crucified for us so that we could have joy and joy eternally. Hmm. Yeah, we should have joy. I have a lot of verses on joy. Bible says this, and you can turn to it if you want, in Psalms 89, 15 and 16. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Blessed is the man. Yep. Huh? There is the people. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. Hmm? God says it's a blessing to be joyful. Amen. To know the sound of joy. Look at in your house, if there's no joy, if there's contention all the time, if there's always problems, it, it seems like there's more negative than there is positive. It seems like there's more grumbling and complaining than there is happiness and joy. Something's wrong with your household. Yeah, man. Right. You need to fix it. Amen. Find out how to fix it. Huh? Why don't you humble yourself before God? Yeah. Often it's pride that keeps joy from entering in. My kids will ask me if they can do things, and I'll say, go ahead. Or I can bristle up against them. You can't do that. Don't you know I'm the boss of this house? You know you already had three crackers. You're not getting a fourth one. <laughs> huh? You say, you laugh about that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff does happen in homes. Yep. And people are so, so piddly on, on control and ruling. Yeah, you know what? I tell my wife, she, she'll say, oh, no, you can't. I said, we got a, we got a house full of food. I mean, uh, why don't you let them eat it <laughs> before it goes bad? You know, now my wife, no, my wife's going, no, don't let them eat it. We're, we're, we're preserving it. <laughs> and so <laughs> saving it for a rainy day. So but the thing is, is that, I, mean, I just go ahead. Uh, go for it. You look at it. I don't have to have a, a iron fist over everything but I, one thing I do appreciate about my kids they do come and ask me and ask my wife and they don't do th a lot of things without asking hmm? but you know what you want to know why they ask they're not hesitant to ask because think about this if they know you're never going to let them have it they probably aren't going to ask they're just going to take and they're going to be sneaky because they want it see they come to us because they know they're going to get it sometimes probably majority of the time okay. what's that do to them it did, we don't, we're not putting a, we're not making a tyrant situation. We're not bringing them down. They're not, they're, we're not stealing their joy from them. Yeah. There's things you don't have to have control over. Amen. You can hurt people spiritually. That's right. uh, and God tells us here, here in verse 16 of Psalms 89, In thy name shall they, they rejoice all the day. Wow, just mentioning Jesus' name. I remember a preacher once said this. 
He says, well, he says, I can praise God in any message as long as Jesus' name is mentioned. <laughs> if Jesus' name is mentioned, I can start saying, amen, praise the Lord. You mentioned Jesus, amen. amen. Huh? Amen. Bible says you rejoice, hey. It says right here, it says, I rejoice all the day. In thy righteousness shall they be exalted. It says, in thy name shall they rejoice all the day. How long is all the day? All day. <laughs> is there a moment you should not rejoice? No. You know, you're going to find out if you rejoice, you wouldn't have the, the lemon look on your face. You wouldn't look like an Etzel, a 58 Etzel, amen? <laughs> <laughs> Bob knows what that means, right? Some of you older folks know what that means because that's what they used to call it. Huh? <laughs> look like a look like you're sucking on a lemon. That's what that's all look like. Huh? That's what the grill looked like. Big oval. Huh? <laughs> the thing is, man, if you just rejoiced, find things to rejoice in. If you can't find things to rejoice in, you 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 are a sorry person, really. You, you, your life is sorry. And I understand there's sorrow comes and, and heartaches come. And it's times it's hard to rejoice, but you need to learn to rejoice and, and be joyful. And the fact, just with the fact that you're saved, yes. that Christ is coming to your life. I was, I was listening to a lady give a testimony today and she said, uh, she said, all my family member, and she calls it the nuclear family. And uh, maybe because they blow up, you know, things happen with it. But uh, she was giving testimony. And she says, out of all our family, there's only five of us that got saved. She says, I'm so blessed that God has chosen me. She was just rejoicing that she saved, that out of all the people in her family, God chose her. Huh? Still doesn't know why, but he chose her. But praise the Lord. That's, you know, look at your life and where you were and what you were doing and how you were acting and the direction you were going. And God diverted you. That's right. Amen. He, 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 put a, he put his hand on the track you were going and he, and he turned you to the right, maybe to the left. But he put you on another pathway heading to him. Yeah, and bringing light into your life and, and getting your attention Amen. to the point you come that you saw your need for Christ. That's right. Amen. You got saved. Man, it's worth rejoicing Amen. and being joyful in the Lord. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Esther was telling me, giving her testimony, she was remembering her salvation. Huh? She did. She was remembering. She told me how she got saved. You know, I knew how she got saved, but she was, she was giving me a rundown of, of how she got saved a year ago. Huh? Was it a year ago? It was. A year ago this month. Hmm? And so, I mean, she was giving me a rundown. Man, she was just, all she was doing was remembering to rejoice. Huh? Yeah. Now, I'm not going to hell. Yeah, huh? She knows they're the hell. She knows there's a heaven. Hmm? Yeah. Listen to this in Psalms 118, 15. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. Now, let me ask you a question. Are you rejoicing? And if you're not, I got a couple questions for you. <laughs> One is, are you righteous? Because the Bible says it's in the tabernacles of the righteous. Huh? So should we not, should we not find a, a voice of rejoicing? I mean, verbally coming out. Oh, look I went to Home Depot today. I should have brought the flyer they gave me. But I went to Home Depot. And uh, there's a guy there, Ed. And he's a, he's, he professes to be a Christian. He doesn't go to a Baptist church, but he professes to be a Christian. And he sneezes. I come in the door, and they can't talk about Jesus or anything until someone else brings it up. And so he sneezes, and I said, and I, and I intentionally I did this. And real loud, I go, God bless you. <laughs> well, guess what he did? He started talking about God. Amen. Started talking about the spirit of God and Jesus Christ. And we went back and forth. And then he hands me one of his flyers to his church to go see the preaching there and hear the preaching. Because <laughs> they're having a revival thing. And, uh, and I said, well, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> huh? Yeah. What did he do? Look at it. it got their attention. Rejoicing. I didn't say it like, well, 
I didn't say it like trying to be an undercover Christian. God bless you. <laughs> huh? You know what I was told why they say God bless you? Anybody know? I've heard of different stories. What's that? Heart stops for a split second when you sneeze. And the, they said, God bless you. They started saying that because that was like, may your heart start up again <laughs> or keep going. May it not stop permanently. <laughs> huh? And that's why I was said. My, my, look at it. I was in public school. My English teacher when I was in seventh grade taught me that. Of all places to learn something like that <laughs> the public school. Mrs. McKeever, I never forgot her. Huh? Amen. The voice of rejoicing. We should have a voice of rejoicing. We should have a voice of praise, a voice amen. of joy. People should know that we're happy. Yeah, amen. How come we get together as Christians sometimes? We're not so happy. Yeah, amen. Hmm? We're not happy. <laughs> we sit in church. Wait for the singing so we're showing in here preaching. Hurry up for the preaching so we can go home. <laughs> Man, I come to church. This is one of my favorite times of the week. Yeah, come to yeah. church. Come to church on a Wednesday. Come to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night. Hey, Friday, we're going to have family night to be there. Hey, we had visitation last night. Hey, we took all the kids out and handed out tracts. Huh? We miss 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 Doors missed a visitation. Not trying to tell on her, but missed visitation. And we tracked her car. Well, you ain't getting away with this. <laughs> so we stopped by her house. She didn't even know. And we put tracks all over her car. Amen. <laughs> huh? You're gonna remember that we came by. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Amen. It was a blessing. James got to meet someone last night while we we're handing out tracks. Had a good visit with them. Huh? Yeah. I mean, we had good visit. I mean, we were hand, just handing out tracks out in the parking lots and stuff. Amen. We had a good time. Yeah. And you know what? And we didn't go around saying, oh, I bet you don't want one of these. <laughs> <laughs> I actually heard someone do that one time. We're out, we're out witnessing. And he handed a track to the guy. He goes, you don't want one of these, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. Must be something bad because you don't want me to have it. Huh? No. You know what I did on the streets in Chicago when we handed out tracks? Hey, you get one of these. About like that, too, by the way. They go, well, I didn't get one. Can I get one? And then you see other people, say, they hear you, and they go, oh, I want one. They start going like this. I want one. Huh? When I was preaching on Bill Street in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, preaching on the street down there, man, people started, I was, I was loud. I mean, we, we rejoiced. We are having a good time. And next thing you know, everybody had a crowd, and they wanted to track. They wanted to know, how come these people are so happy? <laughs> I'm not happy. That's why I'm out here on Bill Street, because I'm getting drunk, because I'm not happy. It's only the drink that's going to bring me happiness. And then we tell them that there's something else can bring you happiness. They want to know. Hmm? <laughs> drink don't bring you happiness. Trust me. <laughs> Trust anybody who's drank. They know. Prayed too many times to the porcelain God. Hmm? Psalms 4, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 7. It says, thou has put gladness in my heart. Now, if you're saved, where's the gladness in your heart? Huh? Look what he says. It says, thou has put gladness in my heart more than the time that their corn and their wine increases. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you know what that means? See, you more have more joy just being saved, being a child of God, than getting material things in this life. Yeah. Even your food you're not as doesn't make you as happy as Christ should. Amen. Being a Christian, you should be happy. Amen. That means if you're starving to death, you're still smiling. Amen. You're joyful. Why? Because I got Christ. You can't take it away. When we, went, when we were audited by the IRS, we got audited three years in a row when I had my business, got audited. And I sat there, and all of a sudden, the Lord just hit me with this. We were, we were kind of nervous at first, because you don't know what they're going to do. But uh, I said to my wife, I said, they can't take away our salvation or our birth. I mean, my birth is settled years ago, and my new birth is settled years ago. So guess what? They can't take either one away, and then we just got joyful about it. And they wanted to know, why are you so happy? And here we got you on the, on the fire. You know, we're, we're, we're getting ready to flip you over. I mean, we got you in a frying pan. So what we did to keep our joy going, <laughs> we started naming people. 
I mean, what they look like. One lady with a chick, another guy with a weasel. I mean, they look like animals. They really did. It's like the Lord brought this on our, and we're just laughing, and they're going, why are you guys laughing? So then when it got down to being audited, they said, how do you give so much when you don't make so little? And I said, let me tell you about God. They said, that's enough. So we'll just, we'll just believe you. <laughs> they didn't want to know about God. I said, let me tell you what God's done for me. Amen. Hmm? Said that to the IRS? Yeah, I said that to the IRS. Huh? When they got all done, they said, we can't find anything wrong with you guys. I said, the only thing's wrong with us is we're nuts. We're screwed on the right bolt, though. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. Huh? They, they probably wondering, who knows to this day, they may say, man, there was a couple that came in here, man, they were just all happy of getting, getting audited. When most people are crying and begging for mercy. <laughs> Huh? I'm telling you, you can be joyful. You don't have to lose your joy because of the circumstances. Your joy is not dependent on circumstances. Your joy is only dependent on Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at if you, if if your everything fell apart in your life, if everything was taken away, you still have Jesus. Amen. Hmm? And when everything that can be taken away by men is just smoke anyway. One day it's going to burn. Hmm? In Psalms chapter 126, verse 5 and 6, and you, most of you know this, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with joy, rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Two things you see here, weeping and, and the word of God. Huh? The precious seed of the word of God and weeping. It's funny, the, 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 the seed of weeping can bring forth joy. Isn't that funny? Weeping for lost souls. Weeping for uh, failed marriages. It doesn't say just for salvation here. You go and help someone in their marriage and you bring the word of God with you, weeping and broken hearted for them, knowing that their marriage is just about ready to be over with. And then if you go weeping and bearing precious seed, you can doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with you. Well, we got them. And I understand. They use that for salvation all the time. But I see it as more than that because it's leaving people to Christ isn't all there is to ministry. Right. Isn't all there is to, to being a Christian. You're supposed to help others, yeah. even brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? When, when someone is, gets down and they're not joyful about someone getting help, yeah. <laughs> something's wrong with the person. Hmm? I just, I just, I, I talked to Brother Taylor, and Brother Taylor and I agree. Brother Cliff Taylor, we agree. We both say, we're just trying to help people. That's all we try to do. We try to help people. And people either like it or they don't. Hmm? Because it's not done their way. Because it's not, it's not done uh, with their approval. <laughs> Why would people be that way? Man, if someone gets help, you just rejoice. Hmm. Look, by the way, there isn't much that we carry to bring joy to us. Huh? There isn't much. What do you, when you're weeping and you're bearing for sea, what are you really adding to it, to the equation that rejoicing comes your way? You're putting it in the hands of the Lord. That's what you're doing. The whole thing. Because why are you weeping? Asking God, get in involved in this. And then, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's most of us. I mean, we can sit here and say, well, I don't know what to do. God, you're going to have to guide me. You're going to have to lead me through this. And, Lord, I, I got your guidebook. I got your, I got your manual. <laughs> huh? But you're going to have to show me. And that happened to us many a times. We went, I stay and think about going to my sister's, and she said, come over for a Bible study. Well, she wasn't even saved. She wanted to come over for a Bible study. So she had friends there, fellow family there. And, uh, and uh, we went in there. And I had no idea other than I was going to preach the gospel. That's all I knew. Man, we prayed and prayed and prayed. And my wife and I got there. And man, God gave me three hours of liberty. To, and, and verses I, I didn't remember I even knew. He had me turn to. And, and man, 
the Lord just broke open the, I mean, the Holy Spirit moved. He just yeah. broke it open. And, man, we were rejoicing before they got saved. And then the, my sister said to me, he says, what do I got to do? Hit you to get saved? I got to shut you up. I need to get saved now. And so she got saved. And our, our family all got saved there, yeah. the whole family. Yeah. And then she says, come back next week and we'll have more. Yeah. Man, that was a time of rejoicing. Huh? And we came the next week knowing there's going to be souls there that need saving. And uh, they said, I'm going to have people there that need, need to be saved. And we went there 52 weeks straight wow. of people getting saved. Going to, they kept saying, next week, come again. Next week, come again. For 52 weeks. Amen. And all those folks got saved. Hmm? I still think of my, one of my sisters that was in one of those meetings. And I was preaching. I was preaching to them. And I got to Revelation 21.8. And my sister saw herself in that list of the fearful and unbelieving and abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, and dollars, and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burning with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And she saw herself in there, and she says, there's no hope for me. Says, I'm doomed to go to hell. And she's crying out like this. And I said, there is hope. But, the, but it says, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I said, Christ can save you. Man, she was willing to get saved right then. And she bowed and trusted Jesus Christ. Amen. Huh? You know what? I left that meeting and I went like this. <laughs> oh, drink too bad, man. Oh, no, man. Oh, no. No, it wasn't very successful. <laughs> We're so stupid sometimes. Man, it's dumb. Huh? Because I've seen stuff like that. And I'm saying, man, rejoice. The person got saved. Look, it wasn't up to you to get them saved. It was you to open up your mouth and give the gospel. You were bearing that precious seed, weeping in your heart for that soul. And Christ saved them. You ought to rejoice that he showed up. As, as wicked a sinner as you've been in the past, you ought to be glad he showed up and in the presence of your life. <laughs> Amen. We should have joy. Man, God, why do you show up in my life? Amen. Yeah. Huh? I'm so glad you do. Amen. What a blessing Amen. that I would entertain the Lord. Amen. Hmm? <laughs> in Psalms 97, 11 says, Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Look at that, gladness for the upright in heart. Yeah, you're your heart upright. Huh? Or is it down wrong? Amen. Is it upright? Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous. Look at that. That's, all, that's almost like a command. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous. Hmm? And give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Hmm. I wonder how often we remember how holy God is. Do you remember how holy he is? Hmm. What, what causes you to remember his, his holiness? Hmm. If you remember his holiness, you're supposed to give thanks. How holy is he? Too often people bring him down to the levels of men instead of lifting him up where God belongs, exalting him. On the highest, above all men, above all creation. I mean, the eternal God. Huh? Hmm. And holy as he is, where the words that would come out of our mouth should not be spoken in his presence. Because he's that holy. That he's worthy of better than what we give him. I mean, thinking of, I think of uh, Moses coming to the burning bush and God told him, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. Why? Because I'm holy. That's why. Because I'm standing on this same ground. Hmm. <laughs> the only reason things become holy is because of God. Hmm. Think about how he, when he presented himself to you when you first got saved. Remember that holy God come to you. Remember how you perceived him? I remember how I perceived him. I broke down crying. I mean, I don't deserve you to be. What do you, what do you, what do you want me for? 
I don't deserve to be before you. Men, men who, uh, I mean, I, I fell down prostrate. I mean, when the Lord presented himself to me and he said, show me that I need to be saved. And I just fell to the ground. I remember that man in Chicago, I was on the street preaching, and I said, you get one of these? And he said, I didn't get one. He says, what is it? And I told him what it said. I told him how to be saved. Man, that man right in the middle of the street. We weren't even out of the street when I was witnessing to him. We're standing in the middle of the street. He bowed down in the street and trusted Christ right there. You want to know why? Because he was before the presence of a holy God. I think of Ford Porter walking along. God told him to pray. He's walking across the crosswalk. He's in the middle of the street. He fell, he fell to his knees. And he starts praying. No one's going to stop him to bow, bow before a holy God. They had, the police had to come and move him physically out of the crosswalk so car traffic can go. And he was still praying when they moved in. He's still in the, the kneeling position. And they put him on the sidewalk. And he still prayed. Want to know why? Because the holiness of his God was more important than the authorities that are under him. Hmm? And when do we remember him and give thanks for his holiness? When we get down on our knees and we pray, we ought to go into prayer with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you for sending your son and the Holy Spirit of God and your word and the fact that we can come to the throne of grace, even to be in your presence. And if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, we wouldn't even be able to be in your presence. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, remember the holiness of our God. Amen. In Job chapter 22, it says, For then... Shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. Delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. I thought about that word, that, that, or those two words, thy face. Hmm? God turns his You know, David asked God to put, turn his face towards him many a times. May you... Uh, Turn your face over here. I need your face. I need you to look over here. And what we should do is look to our God. But often we don't. You know what? Instead of looking up here, we look right here. We fix things in our own life by, by, by we, we have these, uh, what do they call what the Bible has a name for them. I'm trying to think of what it is. Our, our witty inventions. You know what witty inventions are? And some of you have done them. I've seen you do it. And I've done it. <laughs> What we do is we connive to get things our way or connive to get things fixed. Huh? Witty inventions isn't something you really want. <laughs> you, you do things without God. You fix things without God. Well, I'm struggling financially, so I'm going to fix it, and this is how I'm going to do it. <laughs> Why don't you go to God and ask him to fix your financial situation? He's got more money, and he's got more abilities to touch the heart of men to change things. But we, we go and try to fix it with our witty inventions and we try to, we circumvent our God so there's no rejoicing in our life because we did it, not him. But if you just let him have his hand on it, you'd be rejoicing when he got through with it. Say, so how do you know? Because it's happened to me. I just say, leave it in God's hands. Just let him do it. Leave it alone. I put my hands on it. I can corrupt it. But if God puts his hands on it, there's no way it would be corrupted. So let me ask you a question. If you were a betting man, <laughs> huh? if you had, you could be 50-50 messing it up, or God could be 100% and never messing it up. So who would you put your money on, amen? <laughs> who would you put your life on? The Lord. Amen. See. So why do we always continually try to fix things ourselves instead of going to God and fixing it? Fall into our faces and giving him, giving him the opportunity to take care of our life. And, and he, wants to, he wants to be ruler of your life. He wants, he wants you to turn your life totally over to him. Well, I'm saved. I did turn it over. No, you got saved. Look at it, and anybody in here that says, I turned my life totally over to God when I got saved, you're probably lying. <laughs> because you didn't. There was things that you struggled with getting rid of. Yep. That's because you're human. You're a man. You got flesh. 
But see, as you get older as a Christian, there should be less things you want to control, more things you want him to have. And, you, and, and you're weaning and, and weeding out all your, your uh, wicked intentions, and getting rid of them and submitting unto God in areas of your life. And what happens? Oh, it may bring gladness and delight into your life because he's dealing with it. Hmm? John chapter 15, verse 11 says this, These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. Hmm. Two things he, he reveals to us there, that your joy can remain and it can be full. Now let me ask you a question. Isn't that one of the things men look for in this life? They want to be happy. Mm -hmm. Why do you think comedians are so successful? Everybody's looking for happiness. Everybody's looking for a good, I mean, to be joyful. And then when the comedy act's over, you go back to normal. It's like in Proverbs chapter 23, it talks about drinking. And the man gets, I, I, I don't know why God had me say this, but he, the man, man drinks and then he says, I don't want to do this anymore. I quit. Don't, I'll never go back to it. And after he gets sober, he goes back to it. See, that's the way it is with comedians. You, get, you, you hear the comedian and everything, and when he's done, you say, i got to have another fix. i gotta, I got to get some more. Why? Because it's only a temporal joy and only a temporal happiness. Huh? It's only a temporal satisfaction. But God can give you joy to the fullest. A joy that will remain, that you won't lose. Hmm. I'm just telling you. And I look at some of you, it's like, we should have. How are you doing? I'm fine. Yeah. You know what? A lot of people say, I'm fine or I'm doing okay. So, but no one ever says, I'm doing great. You know, I never, when people ask me, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing great. How about you? <laughs> say, why do you do that? Because I don't want to be less than that because that's what God, in my, he's in my life. Like one preacher said, they said, how are you doing? He goes, I'm doing fine. I'm not burning in hell. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Praise the Lord. I like some of these preachers, you talk to them, and you'll say, praise the Lord. And he goes, he's worthy. Amen. Why? Because they're just revealing that, hey, he's affected my life. And there's joy in my life for him. Man, don't we have joy? By the way, you go ahead and uh, live in the mully grubs. Your children are going to live there. Right. But you live amongst joy, and your children will live amongst joy. Amen. They'll want to know why mom and dad are so happy. Yeah, why are you guys so happy all the time? Hmm? In Habakkuk 3, 18, it says, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yeah, now, you, know what he, you know what he sounds like he's saying? No one's stopping me from having joy. <laughs> no one's stopping me from rejoicing. So I will rejoice. I will joy in my salvation. No one's stopping me. You can't stop me. It doesn't matter how many times you bring the devil by, how many times you bring an enemy by, because I'm still going to rejoice. By the way, and when it says that God has prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies, David says, he was probably rejoicing in it. The enemy's standing around watching him eat, amen? He's feasting while they're starving. And he's just rejoicing in the fact he's got a God that brought uh, a meal past his way, Amen. Amen. I mean, it's like, Amen. we don't, we don't rejoice enough. We don't joy enough in our Lord. Mm. Yeah, it says, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head. And they shall obtain gladness and joy. Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Doesn't that sound like a Christian? Yeah, that's in Isaiah chapter 51, 11. In Psalm 33, 21, says, For our hearts shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Yeah. If there's any other reason you should rejoice in the Lord, you should have joy in your heart. should be because you trusted him. Yep. Hmm. Three things I know about a Christian. You need to seek God. You need to trust him. And you need to stand on his word. Yeah. And when you do that, joy's coming. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Look at that. I, I've... I've been persecuted for preaching the truth and making people angry, not because I intended to. But you know what? When they got all done with their persecution, and it was grievous, 
It was, just like the Bible says, joy came. Because I, I, This is the reason why. Because I knew I trusted the Lord and stood on his word. Amen. I did what he wanted me to do. No matter what man thinks. Hmm. Yep. Why do you think I rejoice when I, about our court we won? They're in court. Why do I rejoice? It was, it was nerve-wracking. It really was going in there. Oh, Lord, we need to, you, need to do, you need to do something here, Lord. Or we're in trouble if we don't get help from you and all this. And it wasn't, we weren't sitting there going, read, praise the Lord, we're in court. Amen. But after it all happened and everything was said and done and we won, we rejoiced. There was joy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. You trust in the Lord, you'll be rejoicing. I'll finish with this verse. 1 Peter 1 8. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hey. Huh? Just, tr just trust in him, believing in <coughs> one you do not see. You know he's there. You don't see him, but your trust is in him. That'll bring joy unspeakable, full of glory. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You won't be able to explain how come you're so joyful. You won't. You ever. You, you ever remember that song? It says. Uh, it talks about. How, um, I'm trying to think of how it goes. It talks about how I. Uh, how I know I'm saved, and it talks about he, because he's in my heart. That's the only re way you know God. It's the only way you know him is in your heart. In fact, this song right here we sang tonight. I was when we were singing, but God must have chose this song. Now I belong to Jesus. Amen. Listen to the last verse in it. Joy floods my soul for Jesus has saved me. Amen. You know what he just said? Because I trusted Jesus, joy floods my soul. Freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. He's saying I have joy. Joy because of it. What a blessing. I'm saved. If, if there's any other reason, there's no, I mean, if there's no other reason to be happy, you should be happy because and joyful because you're saved. Born again, bought by the blood. You're in the family of God. You're adopted. You're, you can call him Abba Father now. You can get in his presence. You know the Savior personally. The Holy Spirit knows you, dwells within you. You can know him and you can have wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word. Hey, and the word of God will open up to you because you're saved what joy you should have because of this book and you can understand what God's trying to tell you what most men women and children on their face of this earth have never understood yeah, amen. Amen. and then we go around <laughs> that's what we would be yeah, we should be happy amen. man I know something you don't know <laughs> I've actually said that to people before I know something you don't know see God's opened my eyes. I've been on your side of the fence. Huh? I didn't like it. <laughs> God, God enlightened me, opened my eyes. Hmm? Holy Spirit come and dwell in me. He speaks to me. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Our Heavenly Father, help us understand what we heard tonight. God, I pray that joy will fill our soul. We'll have that joy that's unspeakable and full of glory what a blessing it is lord to be in the house of the lord to know your word what a joy it is lord to have a savior <laughs> no good other god lives in their people except we are blessed and it should can't even imagine lord how you had your mind and your attention upon us your heart was upon us your love was directed to us. And now we have our salvation and great joy within us. Help us, Lord, to display that joy and let us not, let us not discourage others because we don't seem so happy about what we have. God, we've done it to ourselves if we're not happy, if we're not joyful. God, help repair the hearts of men and women in here that their joy may be seen.
by the lost world and other believers. And your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And several